Scientific PD Testing with TechIMP's TF Map Technology. Today with us is Francesco Bartoloni, who is going to present to us the knowledge behind the TF Map and the TechIMP's technology. For everybody who is present, feel free to ask questions. Another experienced engineer, Mr. Lorenzo Paschini, will be answering your questions. And from the part handouts, you can download the presentation, which you will see today, as well as some of the brochures, which explain some of our devices acquisition units. So without any further ado, keep in mind also that you will be able to get the video of today's presentation. I give the word to Francesco. Francesco, take it away. Okay. Hello to everybody. My name is uh, Francesco Bartoloni. I'm a service engineer for uh, the Kim Pastanova Group. And today, with uh, this webinar, we are going to talk about PD testing using uh, TechIMS technology. And uh, in particular, we are going to focus the attention on the TF map technology. Let's start the webinar with uh, the summary. We are going to start with uh, an introduction to parcel discharge. Then, uh, we are going to talk about the challenges we can experience during uh, PD test. And then uh, we start uh, uh, a technical part of this webinar talking about uh, the PD paths, uh, the PRPD pattern, and uh, the TF map. We are going to see how to deal with the TF map. And then again, a technical part talking about uh, the PD acquisition, the noising, and uh, the data analysis and uh, post processing. And then we finish the webinar with uh, some examples. So let's start with some uh, definitions about uh, partial discharge, the PD pass definition, and then uh, uh, we are going to introduce the PR. So first of all, uh, what is partial discharge? For the standard IC, a partial discharge is a localized electrical discharge that only partially bridge the insulation between conductors and uh, which can or cannot occur adjacent to a conductor. For the standard IC, a partial discharge is a localized electrical discharge that only partially bridge the insulation between so now the question is how uh, we get the inception of a partial discharge. If we look uh, to the picture on the right side, we can say that the partial discharge uh, occurs inside the void within the insulated material. This void is uh, filled of uh, gas, for example, I, and we get the inception of a uh, partial discharge when the electric field across the insulated material is uh, greater than the, the electric strength of the um, of the gas inside the inside the voids. Let's now give the definition of a partial discharge pulse. For the standard IC, a partial discharge pulse, a current or voltage pulse that results from a partial discharge occurring within the object of the test. The pulse is measured using a retable detector circuit, which can be introduced into the test circuit for the purpose of the set of the test. For the standard IEEE, a frequency uh, current or voltage pulse that result from a partial discharge, and uh, in a shielded power cable, the pulse propagates away from the PDSR symbol of direction along the cable. If we look at the picture on the right side, we can uh, shortly say that uh, a partial discharge pulse is uh, an electrical pulse. And when we talk about the partial discharge pulse, we mean an high frequency uh, pulse. So now uh, the question is uh, how can we uh, visualize a partial discharge activity? 
Well, the answer is by using the uh, PRPD pattern, which stands for uh, phase resulted par partial discharge pattern, which is the, the most common way to visualize a, a discharge activity by plotting the PD passes in terms of amplitude and phase angle correlated with the supply voltage. In particular, the partial discharge amplitude is correlated with the, the electrical stress due to the supply voltage, while the partial discharge phase angle is correlated with uh, the partial discharge physics, I mean uh, the the shape of the void or uh, the position of the void inside the, the insulating material. And uh, if we look at the picture, this is an example of a PRPD pattern. Uh, we can see that uh, it is a three dimensions uh, chart where in the vertical axis we have uh, the amplitude of the partial discharge. In the horizontal axis, we have the, the phase angle, and the third dimension is uh, given by the, the color, which represents the number of discharge we have in a period, or the so-called uh, repetition rate. We have to say that it's very important to recognize a PRPD pattern because it's the key for uh, a proper PD diagnosis. Okay, let's start now with this first chapter, uh, talking about uh, PD testing, and then we are going to introduce the topic of uh, sensitivity test, and then we are going to talk about uh, the two most common uh, issues we can experience during uh, PD testing, and talking about the noise issues or the multiple PD phenomena issues. PD testing means uh, finding an electrical signal coming from a very small insulation defect do can uh, lead to a major failure. Uh, partial discharge test uh, is carried out as a quality test, which can be performed by the manufacturer to provide uh, a flowless uh, medium or high voltage electrical asset. Or, for example, we can have uh, a commission test to ensure that the transportation, handling, or uh, the installation didn't affect the insulation health. Or, we have uh, a maintenance test in aged asset to avoid uh, unexpected falls in their lifetime. What are the typical PD test equipment? Uh, of course, we need a test object, which can be a cable or transformer or a rotating machine or a switch here. Then we need a voltage source to supply the test object. And uh, it can be, for example, if we are talking about an online test, or an external AC high voltage source, for example, an RPS or a very low frequency generator, if we are talking about an offline test. Then uh, we need of a PD sensor to catch the PD paths, which can be coupling capacitors or uh, high frequency current transformers or it depends on what kind of test we are talking about. Then we need a uh, PD detector, which sample the, the PD paths coming from the, the PD sensor. And the, the PD detector can work in uh, IC or narrow bandwidth, or for uh, deep analysis, it works with uh, ultra. Well, uh, let's now introduce the, the topic of uh, PD test sensitivity and uh, let's try to understand why uh, making a sensitivity test is very important before to do a PD test. Well, we can say that um, one of the key points in a PD testing is uh, to perform the 
sensitivity test, since partial discharge tests can be affected by various disturbances or external signal. So it's very important to prove the measuring chain performance to validate the, uh, the result. And uh, if we are talking about laboratory testing, the sensitivity test is made by uh, a calibration procedure, which is suggested by the standard IEC 60-70. Or if we are in uh, real testing, the sensitivity test is performed to check the measurement chain in real situation. I mean, in, uh, in the field testing, we have to check uh, the chain uh, PD sensor and PD detector to understand before to make the, the PD test if we, if we get a proper signal to noise ratio. Okay, let's now uh, introduce and talk about uh, the two most common uh, issues we can experience during a PD test. I'm talking about first uh, the noise issues because uh, when performing a PD measurement, especially during the field testing, the, the measuring chain, so PD sensor and PD detector, can be affected by unwanted or unexpected noise signals. Those can cover the real PD signals. And uh, it's a problem uh, to have these uh, unexpected noise signals because, for example, uh, one of the most common errors in laboratory is uh, to calibrate the PD detector with uh, noise signal that cover the calibration signal. So you can understand that in this case, it doesn't make sense to make a calibration if the noise covers the calibration signal. Or, for example, in the field, it's possible to misunderstand a noise signal or a PD signal leading to a, a wrong PD diagnosis. Or again, yeah, if we acquire uh, only noise, we can get a PRPD pattern free of PD pulses. So without considering PD signal be below the noise level. The second most common uh, issue that we can experience during a PD test is related to a multiple phenomenon. Because in real case of PD testing, multiple PD sources can be detected by the PD sensor and the PD acquisition unit. So when uh, we study the whole PRPD pattern without separating the single phenomenon, we are going to focus the attention just on the biggest amplitude partial discharge. So we miss the, the lowest amplitude partial discharge. So now, please, Andre, let's go ahead with the, the first quiz, please. And so the first question for all of you is this. What kind of issues can we experience during a PD test? So. Francesco was explaining right now some of the issues that we might experience, but we would like to see what have you understood, what might be actually the biggest issue? Is it A, voltage source, B, calibration, or C, noise and multiple PD phenomena? So this is something which is important to take into consideration because very often when the test is done, the preparations are not done as we expect them to be done, we might have an issue because we will probably have a bigger measurement than expected if we will be taking in some signals which do not fit. So long story short, what do you think is the issue, the biggest issue that we can expect during a PD test? A voltage source, a calibration, or a noise and multiple PD phenomena. So I see that already 60% of you guys have voted, which is great. And I see that you're very accurate. For now, 91% have got this correct and right. And let me close the poll in five, four, three, two, one. We're closing the polls and sharing the results. 
And 88% of you have answered correctly. The correct answer is noise and multiple PD phenomena. That's something you need to take care about. Why? Francesco will explain in the upcoming minutes. So let me hide the results. And now it's Francesco's turn. Okay, thank you, Andre. Okay, let's go ahead with this uh, second chapter. We start this uh, technical part talking about uh, the PD pulse acquisition parameters. And then we are going to build a PRPD pattern uh, starting from uh, a PD pulse. And then we go to study the time frequency analysis to build uh, a TF map. First of all, we have to say that uh, the PD pulse is detected by the PD sensor and recorded by the PD acquisition unit. So normally, uh, again, when we talk about the PD pulse, we talk about uh, a voltage signal. And uh, for a voltage signal, we can define uh, the following main properties, the amplitude peak and the pulse polarity. From these two main properties, we can define these two acquisition parameters, the full scale and the trigger. The full scale is the maximum amplitude recorded by the acquisition unit. And if we look at the picture, uh, the full scale is marked by a red line. In this picture, the full scale was around uh, 200 millivolts. And uh, the trigger level. The trigger level is the minimum signal amplitude detected by the acquisition unit. In the picture is uh, marked by a green line and uh, it is around uh, 20, 20 millivolts. But the KIMP approach is not limited to the peak amplitude and to the polarity, but a full waveform shape is acquired. So we can define uh, the time length and the trigger of such waveform. The time length is the total length of uh, the acquisition windows, and uh, the pre trigger is the time length recorded before the peak. Both these uh, parameters are shown in the in the pitch. So now uh, we want to build a PRPD pattern starting from a PD pulse uh, because we can say that each PD pulse that uh, exceeds the trigger level is recorded by the PD acquisition with the acquisition parameter setting we talked before the full scale, the trigger, the time length, and the pre trigger. But together with the, the pulse details, the PD acquisition unit says also the phase angle of the applied voltage when the PD take place. To better understand uh, how uh, our technology build a PRPD pattern, I want to show you uh, this short video where a PRPD pattern is, uh, is built. As you can see, it's easy to recognize the, the trigger level here, and the full scale is this one. And this is the, the PRPD pattern at the end of uh, this acquisition session. Let's now introduce uh, the time frequency analysis, and uh, let's try to understand why it's very important, this, uh, this approach to build a TF map uh, because uh, uh, it helps us to, to solve one of the, the issues I presented before. So we can say that the classic PD acquisition unit doesn't say further information about the PD path unless of the amplitude or the repetition rate or the phase angle. But the KIM has introduced in the late 90s a further level of analysis to characterize each PD pulse with two new indexes, which are the equivalent frequency, here the formula, and the equivalent time length, here. 
And it's very important to, to understand this approach because the TF analysis approach allow us, allows the signal detected, sample and acquired to be collected into a homogeneous cluster based on the shape of the signal. This means that if we apply this formula here to each PD pass detected by the, the PD detector, uh, we can uh, collect each PD pass with the, with the same, with similar shape parameter in the same cluster. So this means that by using this time frequency approach, we can separate different uh, PD source. Again, each cluster is related to signals coming from the same source. So they are characterized by similar shape parameters. So here we are, we can now build uh, a TF map by applying those formulas for each PD pass detected by the, the sensor. And as you can see here in this TF map, in this, uh, in this example, it's now easy to, to recognize different cluster. And each different cluster means different PD source. And this is very important because in this way we can uh, solve the problem regarding to have a multiple PD phenomena. And just with the TF map, just with this approach, we can separate different phenomena, different PD source. Let's now see uh, how the standards deal with the, with the TF map. First, the standard IC 6004 about online partial discharge measurements on the set of winding insulation of rotating electrical machines says that time and frequency domain separation can be developed through a pulse shape analysis to produce the so-called TF map that plots the equivalent time length of the pulses versus the equivalent frequency content. Here we have another example of TF map where we can uh, easily recognize different clusters, which means different phenomena. Again, the standard says that disturbances will often appear as a cluster of pulses that is in a position which is distinctly different from stator wind PD and can thus be identified and suppressed from the PD part. Here, the standard IEEE 1434 regarding the guide for the measurement of partial discharge in AC electrical machinery show us this, uh, this example of a cluster separation in the TF map. And also, also here, we can appreciate uh, how uh, just with the TF map, we are able to separate different uh, phenomena coming from different sources. This standard say that the data are displayed in terms of pulse width and bandwidth for the purpose of separating different partial discharge sources from the insulation system and discriminate from external noise source. Here are the second quiz, so please, Andre. So now we have another question. The question talks about the TF map, and the question is, what does the TF map allow us to do? Is it A, separation of different phenomena, or is it B, study of waveform, or is it C, building a PRPD or phase resolved partial discharge pattern? So, which one of these is, according to you, the correct answer? So, what essentially TF map allows us to do. I hope you understood that the TF map is actually just another helpful tool which helps us understand different mm, something, helps us understand how to do something and that something is the correct answer to this question. So is it A, do we use the TF map to separate different phenomena or B, to study the waveform as it is? or to build the PRPD pattern. I see that you are 
very diligent when it comes to voting. Already 57% have casted their vote. And for now, 83% of all attendees have answered correctly. So we will leave you five more seconds to cast in your votes. The ballots are open. Four, three, two, and we're closing the polls and sharing the results. 85% of you have answered correctly. And the answer is separation of different phenomena. That's what we use the TF map for. So this was the correct answer. And now let us continue with the presentation with the new knowledge coming from Francesco. Thank you for your answers and give your best attention to Francesco's upcoming slides. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's start now with this uh, technical part of the webinar, uh, talking about the, the topic of the noise. We are going to, to talk about the PD signal flow. Francesco, and the, just a second, maybe you should share the screen, something moved, and now I only see the partial discharge testing with TechEMP's TF map technology. Let me see. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Now, oh, perfect. Maybe, maybe I saw that. Okay. Uh, okay, let's start uh, this uh, technical part talking about uh, uh, PD acquisition denoising. We are going to, to talk about the PD signal flow and the utilization of hardware and software filter. And let's try to understand why we have to use hardware and software filter during a PD test. And then we're going to talk about the, the acquisition parameters. First of all, let's study a typical PD acquisition chain, which starts from a PD sensor in this case is uh, an high frequency transformer. The PD sensor uh, gets the, the PD pulse and sends the, the PD pulse to a PD detector, which uh, thanks to his uh, ultra wide band digitizer, uh, sample the analog PD pulse coming from the PD sensor in order to get a digital signal and to get five parameters. The amplitude, the phase angle, the repetition rate, the equivalent frequency, and the equivalent time. So for each pass, the PD detector give us these five parameters. The first three parameters uh, we use the amplitude, the phase angle, and the repetition rate to build the PRPD pattern. And we use the last two uh, parameters to build the PRPD. Okay, now uh, keep in mind this uh, PRPD pattern and this TF map because they are related to a phase of PD. We are going to use this PRPD pattern and this TF map uh, as an example. But we have to first say that uh, the PD sensor uh, not just uh, catch just the PD pass, but uh, also external disturbances or background noise or excited noise. So that's why we have to introduce the topic of uh, an hardware and software filter because when performing a PD test due to the complex electrical system involved, background noise or excited noise or external disturbances may affect the readings of amplitude and repetition rate, leading to a decrease of the signal to noise ratio. So that's why it's very important to talk about the hardware and software filter because we want to uh, increase the measurement sensitivity. We want to increase the signal to noise ratio. Uh, in other words, PRPD pattern and PF map help us to identify and separate these uh, 
unavoidable phenomena, and they can be filtered out by using hardware and software filter in order to increase the measurement sensitivity. So this is a very important topic because uh, just by using both PRPD pattern and TF map, we can separate and identify uh, these external phenomena which cover the uh, PD reading. So we wanted to increase the measurement sensitivity by using this uh, uh, filter. Let's come back to the, the same one I showed you before. This was the, the situation before filtering. If we just look at the PRPD pattern, we can see that there is just uh, uh, background noise. Yeah. At this stage, it is impossible to uh, understand, to investigate uh, below this, uh, below the noise. But if we look at the TF map, we can see here uh, the cluster related to the background noise. We know that it, it is the cluster related to the background noise because uh, it is uh, at very low frequency. But if we pay the attention at around 12, 10 megahertz, we see that there are few points here which can be associated to a uh, PD activity. But at this stage, again, it is impossible to recognize this PD activity just by looking at in the, in the PRPD pattern. That's why we need to apply a filter, in this case, a software filter that was applied to, to filter out, to delete the, the cluster related to the noise. In such a way, we can increase the signal to noise ratio, we can improve the measurement sensitivity. And just now, we are able to, we are able to appreciate the, the cluster of the PD activity by looking at, at the TF map but also by, by looking at the, the PRPD pattern, now we are able to see something different uh, from, the, from the noise. Uh, let's now uh, introduce this topic because um, before to talk about uh, post-processing analysis, we have to say that PD analysis starts during the acquisition process. During this stage, for a uh, uh, completed PD acquisition session, it's suggested to perform a full set of data acquisition by tuning, by changing the following acquisition parameters, the full scale and the trigger lever. It's very important to change during the PD acquisition, change these parameters to investigate the available full range, or, for example, we have to do the timeline because by changing this parameter, it's possible to improve the cluster separation of different PD source in the TF map. Or again, we can tune the pre parameter because by changing this parameter, allow us to get the PD pass reflection, which is useful for a post-processing localization of uh, a PD source. Okay, it's now time to introduce the, the topic of the data analysis and uh, post-processing. We are going to talk about the SID action, and then we have to introduce the PD phenomena trending, and then we'll come back to the TF map to understand uh, what kind of information we can uh, get Okay, the, post, the SID action starts with the first stage, which is the separation, which means separate each different cluster on the TF map in order to highlight hidden phenomena and study the relative sub pattern property. If we come back to, to the example we did before, this was the, the situation after uh, filtering. Now we are able to separate the different cluster. The cluster related to the background noise, 
was separated by a green color. Instead, the cluster relay to the PD activity was marked as red. And here you can see the green, the sub pattern related to the green cluster. It is this. And the sub pattern of the PD activity, it is this. So ju just now, we can uh, go ahead with the second step of, of processing, which is the identification. Identification means give a name to each sub pattern, for example, noise or external disturbances or APD source. In, uh, in our example, uh, this sub pattern is related, as I told you before, to a background noise because uh, uh, this doesn't have any correlation with the, with the supply voltage. Instead, if we look at the sub pattern of the red cluster, we can uh, for sure say that uh, we are in front of an internal partial discharge. We can say this uh, if we look at the, at the shape of the pattern, which is uh, very typical for an internal partial discharge, or if we look at the position in the phase angle of the, of the pattern. And here in this picture, also our uh, automatic identificator uh, confirm that we are in front of an internal partial discharge. And here we have uh, some diagnostic indexes which help us uh, to, to make a proper diagnosis. But uh, so we introduce the last step of SID action. The diagnosis is related to uh, the type of test or uh, to the type of asset. Because if we are uh, talking about the commissioning test, commissioning test is a pass or no pass test. So partial discharge activity are not acceptable in the equipment under test. Different is the situation if we talk about the maintenance test because for a maintenance test, uh, to make a diagnosis, we need of uh, APD trend. And uh, we can say that uh, as the identification of a partial discharge phenomena, which means give a name to the partial discharge phenomena, the partial discharge evolution over the time is very important. It plays a key role for a correct diagnosis and can be evaluated in terms of amplitude and repetition rate of the detected phenomenon. And by monitoring these two parameters, the amplitude and the repetition rate of the detected phenomenon over the time, we can have a proper idea of the PD source behavior because it, it is affected by external stress. For example, the load or the temperature or the humidity or mechanical stress. Here in the picture, this is the trend of the example I showed you before. In this uh, case, we perform three PD session measurements. The first one was uh, around October 2018, the second one uh, around April uh, 2019 and the third one around uh, October 2019. And we can appreciate that between the first PD session and the second one, we get uh, an increasing on the amplitude and the repetition rate. But from the second one and the third sec PD session, uh, we get a steady, steady situation related to the, the amplitude and the repetition rate. So just with the next step, just with the next uh, partial discharge section, if we see that we, we get again an increasing on the amplitude and on the repetition rate, we can suggest uh, to the customer, for example, a, a visual inspection of the equipment under test. Let's now come back to the to the TF map because uh, also the TF map could be used as a post-processing tool 
because it can give us uh, useful information. For example, by uh, studying the TF map, we can uh, recognize the cluster related to an excited noise or uh, the cluster uh, related to a corona discharge. This example here, for example, uh, the red cluster, uh, which is at very low frequency, it was related to the exciter noise. And also this, this is the typical PRPD pattern of uh, an exciter noise. While the, the green cluster here, it is related to a, a corona discharge. You see here, we have a very low spread cluster. This is a typical property of uh, a corona discharge. Or again, we can use the TF map also to get information about uh, how far we are uh, from the PD source. Because if we look at this sample, if we are talking about a high frequency uh, components, uh, which means it is not affected by attenuation, this means that uh, we are near to the, to the PD source. Here you can see this wave. We are uh, in front of uh, an high frequency PD pulse. So this means that we are near to the, to the PD source. It's time now of the, the last quiz. So please, Andre. Okay, the last question for you guys is, let me launch the poll, what is an S? ID. What does an SID stand for? Does it stand for A, surface, identification and discharge? Or does it stand for separation, identification and diagnosis? Or is it sensor, identification and detector? Which one of these three is it? So is it either A, B or C? You can, of course, I see that already 40, <clears throat> no, I'm sorry, 50% of you have voted, out of which 93% have got it correct. I will still not uncover what is the correct answer, but this is a process in which we want to be sure what is happening within your insulation. So after a minute, I have almost 60% people voting. Let's leave it for a few more seconds, after which we will show you the results. So five, four, three, two, one. We're closing the polls. Thank you for your answers. And we're sharing the results. The correct answer is B, separation, identification, and diagnosis and 90% of you guys have got it correctly. So, which fills me with hope, knowing that you are listening so attentively. So thank you very much once again for your answers. And I give all the attention to Francesco, who is now going to give us some more knowledge. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you, Andre. Let's finish this, uh, this webinar two real case examples. The first one is related to a rotating machine. Uh, here you can see some details about the, the test. And uh, if we now pay the attention to the PRPD pattern and the, and to the PF map, we can see how in the PRPD pattern we, we can already see that there are uh, different partial discharge phenomenon. But again, just by looking at the TF map, we can separate each phenomena and make a proper uh, identification of each uh, phenomena by stud studying the, uh, the sub-pattern of each phenomenon. For example, the black cluster, it was related to the background and the excited noise. The red cluster was uh, identified as a slot partial discharge. The green cluster, it was uh, uh, identified as uh, an embedded 
the laminations. Instead, the, the blue cluster was uh, identified at a cross door. The, the second example is regarding the uh, medium transformer test. Here are some, uh, some information about uh, the test. And here we have uh, the, the PRPD pattern and the TF map related to, to this partial discharge test. Again, also here from the PRPD pattern, uh, we are able to, to see a different uh, phenomena, but for a correct uh, diagnosis, we need to separate each phenomena. And uh, this is possible just by using the map. As you can see here, the black cluster was related to, to the background noise. Instead, the red cluster was uh, the, the partial discharge activity. And in this case, it was uh, an internal partial discharge. So uh, I finished with, uh, with this webinar. It's now time for your question and uh, my answer. And uh, in the meantime, I can leave you my details and the details of my colleague. Uh, don't hesitate to, to contact me and uh, I'll be available to, to support you for, uh, for any doubts or questions. Okay, so I also see there were a lot of questions and Lorenzo answered a big chunk of them maybe it would be better for lorenzo to suggest maybe answering some of the questions out loud i see one question from mr hassan rauf can we have this webinar recording yes of course mr rauf you will get the link to the recording of the webinar after we finish with the webinar so it will be sent to all of the participants so no issue with that Let's see. Uh, Francesco, can you see the questions yourself? Yes. Okay. So uh, not, not yet, not yet, but Lorenzo uh, left me uh, a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that some one of you guys asked uh, mm, about the, the IC bandwidth and uh, if we if we are able to use the IC bandwidth with uh, with our uh, system, and uh, of course the answer is uh, is yes. And uh, with the Tekim technology, is also possible to use uh, all the the IC uh, bandwidth that we call the hardware IC bandwidth, or we have also an IC uh, software. Uh, because uh, with the IC software version, we have uh, uh, the possibility to use also the uh, TF map. Because we have to understand that if we use the, the IC bandwidth, it's not possible to build uh, the TF map. The TF map is, uh, we can have the TF map just if we use uh, the, the ultra wide band. So that's why. Uh, the Kims developed this uh, so-called IC software bandwidth. In such a way, we can apply the, the, the PD data by using the ultra wide band to, to build the TF map. And then we can use the IC uh, bandwidth to, to give information about, for example, Pico Coulomb and to validate the, the result. Okay. So that was a question from Mr. Uh, Gupta at 2.32. There was a second question after that from Mr. Uh, Mandaka at 2.34. In the TF map, how to identify noise, void, and surface PD? Okay, okay, this is a good question. Um, well, uh, if I come back to... To some example, uh, let me take, for example, okay, 
for example, this is an example here. Okay, in general, um, we cannot use just the TF map or just the PRPD pattern. It's very important to understand that we use both of these instruments because with the TF map we can separate different phenomena and just by uh, selecting one cluster we can study the sub pattern and just with the sub pattern we know what kind of phenomena we are in front of and for example a typical PRPD pattern of uh, background noise is uh, like this there is no correlation between the patterns and the supply voltage different the situation where we are in front of a, a partial discharge because as you can see here uh, we know that we are in front of a, a partial discharge activity because in this case the the, the shape of the the shape of the, the sub pattern is related with the with the supply voltage and uh, for example uh, from our experience we know that there are uh, uh, some uh, um, characteristics some properties about for example a pattern of an internal partial discharge in this example we can say that um, it's very typical for an internal partial discharge to have the the inception of a negative PD pulse before the zero crossing of the of the supply voltage. So for each subcluster, we have to to study the shape of the sub pattern or the position in the in the sub pattern. Okay, I hope that answers your question, Mr. Mandaka, we also have a quick question, but I think we answered that question for Mr. Navid. What is SID action? So we answered that that's uh, separation, identification, and diagnosis. It is a procedure which that imposes simply to understand what kind of issues do you have. Then at Mr. Uh, Mr. Gupta asked at 244, a cable having multiple joints and the measurement done from terminations only. Is it possible to do TDR in such a cable and how accurately it can be done? Francesco, do you see that question? Okay. Yes, Please. it is possible. It is possible, of course, make a, a TDR in this kind of uh, test. And uh, of course, uh, we have uh, to say that uh, it depends on the length of the cable because uh, we have to also consider the PD pulse atten attenuation when the pulse uh, flow through the, uh, through the cable. But uh, uh, of course, uh, with our instrument, we are able to, to perform a, a TDR, so the, the localization of the, of the, the PD source and uh, to, to, get, to get the localization, uh, we have to say that uh, we, we need also uh, the reflection of the, of the PD pass. But uh, again, it, it is possible to, to make the, the localization and the TDR. Okay, thank you for that answer, Francesco. We have one more question at 2.47 from Mr. Pravin. He's asking, and I'm not sure if I'm understanding, for PD signal processing, is TechIMP using Wavelet or FFT? Mm, can you repeat, Andre? I didn't understand. It is uh, for PD signal processing, is TechIMP using Wavelet, probably it was Wavelength, or FFT? Uh, let, let's say that for post processing we used to to make uh, both a, a time domain analysis and a, a frequency analysis. I don't know if okay. this is, is the answer of this question because I, I didn't understand. But um, that's post processing. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I want to say I think that makes sense. So, Mr. Pravin, if your questions is, is answered then great if not please clarify it but as Francesco said we use basically both 
in order to understand what's going on. So wavelength and FFT, time domain and frequency domain. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, it's correct. Okay, one more from Mr. Munib Islam at 247. What is the recommended sensor for transformer online? Okay, uh, for transformer online, uh, my suggestion, or oh, I mean, the Kim's suggestion is to use, uh, we have uh, enough experience with uh, antenna sensor or uh, with the tab sensor. I show you in the, in the slide. This was uh, the example of a medium voltage transformer test. And uh, in this PD test, I used the, the test sensor and uh, I was able to, to get an internal parcel discharge. So, um, yes, the suggestion is for an online PD test for a transformer. Uh, yeah, we, we can use an uh, antenna sensor or a uh, tab sensor if it's not possible to to get the to get the cable. Because if it's possible to to get the cable, uh, also by using uh, an high frequency current transformer, it's uh, it's uh, it's possible. And of course, uh, an high frequency current transformer has a a greater uh, sensitivity. But in the case in the in the case where where uh, it's not possible to to get the the cable, the the best solution is by using uh, antenna sensor or uh, the tab sensor. Okay, I hope Mr. Islam that answers your question. Another question from Mr. Ozi: Does the pulse spectrum assist in the PD identification? So. Does the pulse spectrum? Mm, okay. Uh, let's say that the the pulse spectrum help us uh, to build the TF map. So the pulse spectrum help us to uh, separate different phenomena. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mandaka is asking again. High voltage single core cable with capacitive coil sensor for PD. Can the TF method be applied over there in online PD measurement? Uh, please, Andre, repeat, sorry. The sure. answer so oh, he's in, the, in high voltage, no. yeah. High voltage single core cable with capacitive yes. coil sensor for PD, so it has a built-in sensor for PD. Can we use the TF method to be applied to do online PD measurement? Uh, so let, let me understand if I I, I got you. you. You are you are an, an high voltage single core cable, and you mm -hmm. have a capacitive embedded sensor. Mm -hmm. And then you want to know if we can use the TF map. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, it's possible. It's possible, of course, by using uh, our our equipment. I say. Uh, uh, but yes, it's possible. We have uh, we have experience where we we adapt our uh, our equipment with the uh, embedded sensor. Yes, Perfect. and uh, I, I, I would say that with the embedded sensor we we get also a, a a good signal to noise ratio, a good sensitivity of the test. Yes, of course. I, I guess it's always better to have a built-in sensor, right? Yeah, correct. Okay, um, we have a short question and probably one of your slides will help. Mr. Corde at 250 is asking, what is the definition of equivalent time length? Okay, so go back to... was showing it before. To, and, to, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We will see it quickly. Even in time then, right? Yes. Yeah. This the, the time length is the yeah is the the length of the acquisition windows, and uh, why it's uh, it's important because uh, if we if we set the time length, for example, 
uh, 10 microseconds, so a big uh, acquisition windows, we are also able uh, to get some PD pulse reflection. And uh, it's, it's important to get the PD pulse reflection when we, when we got a partial discharge activity. We want to know if we can read also the reflection of the PD pulse because just with the uh, PD pulse reflection, we can uh, uh, use the TDR and we can perform the localization. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Mr. Corde. In your example, the PD pulses are positive in the positive half cycle. How is that possible? So he is asking, how come we have positive pulses with with a positive half cycle of sine wave? Can we say something to that? Okay. Sure. Sure. Yes. Um, um, I understood. Uh, you asked me uh, why uh, we have positive PD pass in the positive. Yes, and I saw the negative PD has, pass. In, in. An additional question. He says, shouldn't PD pulses be negative in the positive half cycle and vice versa? Yes, but uh, we have to say that it depends on what kind of sensor we are going to use, because in this case, as I show you, we were using an HFCT. Yeah, an HFCT. So an HFCT is uh, is installed around the the ground lead of uh, of a cable of a cable, and uh, uh, in this case we we should introduce another another topic about the polarity. But uh, when we use a high frequency current transformer, we are in front of a direct circuit. Means that uh, we expect this uh, this pattern means positive PD pass during the, the positive uh, halfway and negative PD pass in the negative halfway. Different is the situation when we perform the measurement with the capacitive coupler because the capacitive coupler, for example, in uh, uh, rotating machine PD test, uh, they are installed in parallel to the equipment under test. In that case, we are in front of an indirect circuit, so we expect negative PD pulse during the positive halfway and uh, positive PD pulse during the negative. So the answer is it depends uh, of which kind of sensor we are going to use. Because for a high frequency current transformer, we store the high frequency current transformer, let's say in series with the with the insulating material. So we expect this uh, direct polarity, positive with positive and negative with negative. But if we use uh, uh, coupling capacitors, uh, we we store the cap the coupling capacitor in parallel to the equipment under test. So we expect the reverse, the reverse polarity. I think that makes a lot of sense, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, we have just a few more. Uh, we have one interesting question uh, from Mr. Gupta. He's asking, during commissioning test of high voltage cable, is it possible to do the PD measurement in pico coulomb? Uh, yes, 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 the answer is yes. If I understood well, we are talking about offline, right? Uh, in this yes. case, well, he didn't mention it. Yes, yes, I would guess it's an offline test. Yeah, an offline test. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. Uh, the procedure to, to do this is uh, make a, a sensitivity test before the PD testing. So uh, normally we inject a, a PD pulse uh, with a known pico coulomb, and uh, in such a way we can. Uh, let's say calibrate our instrument and uh, after this sensitivity test we can perform the the pd test by using uh, the pico coulomb amplitude okay uh, we have also a question which is interesting from mr corde he's saying tab antenna is a very high frequency sensor 
So how can we say that it's picking up internal PD in a transformer? Wouldn't attenuation be too high? Okay, uh, let, let's say this, the uh, TEP sensor is not uh, uh, an antenna. Let's say that the TEP sensor is a sensor which use uh, the magnetic termination to get the electric field and to measure the difference of the, uh, of the electric field between the two termination and uh, it is possible to, to get uh, high frequency pulse because uh, uh, when we use the TEF sensor, we usually uh, be in the, in the case of the transformer. So we are uh, very near to the, to the insulated material. And uh, if we are talking about uh, cast resin transformer, if we are talking about uh, oil insulating transformer, we have to say that the attenuation uh, within the oil is uh, less than the attenuation in uh, that we get in uh, in the cast resin transformer. Okay, well, more or less, uh, we have a few more thank yous uh, from Mr. Putter. Thank you so much, and Mr. Corde is thanking for his answers. And actually, I don't see any more questions. It's already 3:07. So I would just use this opportunity to say thank you for attending. Thank you for listening to Francesco. And since this was actually Francesco's show, I'm going to leave it to him to close the webinar. Francesco, take it away. Yes, thank you to, to everybody. And uh, again, uh, uh, feel free to contact me. I'll be available to, to support you. Thank you again. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.